We're at uh, just um, a minute past start here. We'll get this thing going. I just want to say welcome uh, to Doc Nation webinar number three. Um, this is a uh, great evening. I uh, hope everyone had a happy uh, holiday weekend. Um, in, in fact, when I when I was asked to host this, I was, there, I was like, you guys are going to do this just right after Christmas. I don't know if people have time, this and that. And um, so I was the doubter, but uh, it turns out there were just, was it just south of 900 registrants here? Or yeah, I, I, I was on the same page as you saying, you know, the week between Christmas and New Year's is a tough time, but I think there's a lot going on in the medical world, especially on the side of physicians that needs to be discussed. And I, I think that's why, you know, Doc Nation is here to stay. And, and that's why we're here uh, discussing it right now, especially, you know, a, lot, a lot's going to change in the next four days for all the physicians. Well, I, numbers don't lie, right? So yeah. um, I stand corrected, and but I'm I'm thankful to be here um, and uh, hosting uh, tonight. Uh, in fact, when I found out I was hosting with you, Dr. Grafita and Dr. Verma, I was like, I'm not going to have to do much. I've I've heard these guys. They're they're so passionate, and they um, they don't shy away from the hard uh, hitting topics and subjects here. So um, I'm very appreciative of what you guys are doing, and I. I just love what Doc Nation is doing, bringing a ton of physicians together and um, in, short, in a short amount of time and already helping some physicians uh, with some of their problems, um, particularly uh, negotiating uh, negotiations and contracts. Uh, Dr. Grafita, you're on again here with us. Just kind of want to go back to ep episode two, that webinar last month. Can you tell, can you give us a quick, you know, yeah, back I think at that we, had, we had someone great on last month, uh, Greg, he's a, a lead negotiator for us for um, medical contracts. And uh, in the last month, we've been able to actually hook up with a lot of people that were on the webinar and start that new negotiation period uh, for those physicians. I think, I think the thing we want to impress is that, you know, all you have to do is, is click on the Join the Nation button on our website, and then we'll, we'll get out to you. Um, and set up a time and date to talk about it. You don't have to be up for a new contract to have a negotiation about the current situation you're in. Um, so I think, you know, that that's really what uh, threw me a little loop. I was like, well, I have my contract's for two more years. I'm like, you can negotiate whenever you want. And I think that's one thing that Doc Nation really wants to to bring to the table. And, and that's kind of what we want to talk today and have Dr. Verma talk about how, how we, we as physicians, they try to keep us in the dark, right? Nikhil, I mean, what do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, uh, first off, I appreciate everyone taking some time to join us tonight. I uh, appreciate you guys having me on as well to discuss this. And I think um, as us three have had plenty of these conversations and I've started my own YouTube channel on this concept as well to, you know, what are these things that we're, we're getting blinded to as physicians and where are we losing autonomy? And why is this burnout rate happening so abruptly in our field? Why are, you know, what, 100,000 plus physicians quit practicing medicine? last yeah. year you know we need to be at the forefront and not only protect ourselves protect the future generations just to make this healthcare world a better place so we're living and striving and doing what's best for our patients dr verma I, i'm as a non-physician i'm i'm i have my pen here i'm taking some notes here uh, some of the stats and things that you're going to show uh share with us um also have been following you personally on linkedin and and social media as well there on uh, Instagram, great follow. I, to, to hear something like that, where that many physicians quit, that just, I, I don't know what, what do patients hear when they hear that? What happens to those people's staff? Like what happens to these communities? I'm, so again, another reason why I'm, I'm loving what, and thank you for your time and loving what Doc Nation is doing here. Um, I, just, I know that you guys have some points. You guys briefed me on some points that we're going to get into tonight. First off, the marketing with this was great. I saw that. It was like doctors in the dark with the medical. I mean, that was uh, catching. But uh, the point here is that you guys are about to hit some amazing points. I had some questions for you, but I think with this many attendees, the Q&A session is going to probably do my job for me here yeah. as, a, as we yeah. guide this conversation. But um Guys, go ahead. Um, I do, first, before you go, uh, Dr. G, what you said about 
already representing physicians in contracts and negotiation. I know that you had a, a baseball background. Yeah. Um, I played basketball. I'm an athlete. And I was too short, too slow. Couldn't shoot the ball like Steph Curry to, to make <laughs> yeah. it to the NBA. But Same, just in baseball. <laughs> there you go, right? But it was like, it is, it just makes too much sense to me that physicians being professionals, you guys are the pros, you guys are the talent. Someone, you should be represented. Right? Yeah, and I think that's how the it, concept it. of Doc Nation came around, right? It was, it was very much just take the model of the athlete. Why does, why does, you know, the professional athlete uh, have so much of the pot? you know, have so much weight and why does the physician not, in my mind, the physician is more important to the community, kind of what we talked about. Uh, it, it's, it's much more taxing um, on the individual to become a physician. You know, you have to go up your thirties or, or your twenties, right? If you have your twenties, you have to go into severe debt to get to this level. Why should we not have the same representation? Um, and actually Doc Nation has been an idea for 10 years now. And, and the way it really took off was I had a nice conversation with a professional agent for football. And, you know, we might have talked to some other webinars. We have a lot more attendees here. So I'd like to dive into what we're really thinking about doing. And he, he kind of, and you know, what's funny is, is me and Dr. Verma and, and many of the physicians on this webinar are going to nod their head when I say this. We, we don't really understand it. And it's more when you talk to an outsider and like, yeah, why do you guys just take it? Yeah. Why do you guys just kind of just, allow Medicare to keep cutting your race, allow the non-competes that you have to keep going through, allow them to tell you what your RBUs are going to be. Um, so that's how this started is, is I talked to this bulldog of a, an agent for the NFL representing some very, very big players. And he's like, yeah, we can, he's like, you guys need representation. You shouldn't be going in negotiating your contracts with the CEO of the hospital. You know, you, they should give you a contract. You should have handed off to agent A or agent B and you don't have any more discussion with the C-suite because for a few reasons, you shouldn't be the bad guy. We're not trained in doing that. We're trained in medicine. At no point, Nikhil, did you learn any business in your med school? I know I know. this is where I want to kick it to you because I know your YouTube channel is called What You Didn't Learn in Med School. I mean, did you learn any business or any negotiation tactics in medical school? No. I mean, even talking to the attending physicians in med school during rotations, it was kind of blatantly obvious that they didn't understand their own contracts and what they got themselves into. It's like, it's like the blind leading the blind <laughs> pun intended with this, with the theme of today, like, and, and that was frustrating. Um, and you know, I've had my practice start for a couple of years now. I still don't understand. I still wouldn't feel comfortable going to uh, negotiating power. I have leverage. Sure. That's great. But I don't have negotiating skills. I don't know what the, to do when that comes up and to really be a good negotiator, you have to have all parts of that going down for you. Yeah, and I think one of the big things with this webinar I want to talk about is that even though doctors are in the dark about a lot of this stuff, you don't have to learn it all. You don't. We can't. You got to be a good doctor. You got to be a good physician. That's why we went into this. We went into medicine to, you know, be a good doctor and a good physician, but we deserve to have autonomy. We deserve to have a decent lifestyle. You know, we shouldn't be doing hours and hours of paperwork. We shouldn't be killing ourselves seeing 60, 80 patients a day. It's not good for us. It's not good for the patient. All you have to do is, is, is hook up with, with someone like Doc Nation that'll represent for you. And unfortunately, right now, we just don't have that in medicine. And that's why I think Doc Nation is, is taking off so fast and really getting the, um, the, the mass that we were looking for. When we first started this, we didn't know how, many, how it would be received in, in medicine. You know, We didn't know what doctors really needed. I knew in my little cohorts and people I talk to in my society meetings, they're like, yeah, we, we need that. Um, but we're not asking physicians to get smarter on negotiations or get smarter on business. We're just saying, leave, leave it to Doc Nation, let them take over the reins. I mean, we have a list here, uh, me and uh, Dr. Verma went over before this webinar of things that we really don't know exactly how to do. And I'd say me and you have looked into this, like we've tried to become professionals at it. Yeah. And it's not our, it's not our, uh, Forte. I mean, from from how RVUs are calculated to uh, how how you get to hire your staff some places, they don't let you do that. You're, you're, how you get to depict the patient experience. A lot of times, you're not even in control of that. Um, so, I love Nikhil for you to start. Kind of, do you want to chat about RVUs or, or or I know that was one thing you're passionate about and showing how a lot of people don't even understand where that money's coming from or how it's going. Yeah. Do you possibly have that slide 
um, yeah. they pop up. Um, and this just helps organize the thoughts. Um, it's not very complex in itself, but, you know, unfortunately for physicians, we, we are valued in an employed contract based off our RUs, our relative value units, based off of the amount of work that we do. And this is all different, different parts of the nation. But, you know, what goes into an RVU, a lot of physicians don't even know. Um, and how does that work out for your um, contracts? How does it work out for everything else? So these are some important things to, to consider. So what do you see there? Do you see? Yep. I can see it. Hopefully everyone in the audience can see it. Um, and I already see a question, but I'm going to walk through this first and we'll uh, kind of come back to that later. So, so what there's components, there's three different parts of the RVU. There is a work RVU that's, you know, position time, skill, intensity of a service. So if we're doing a general wellness exam, you know, that can take anywhere from 30, 40 minutes, depending on it. Um, is it a complex case, a not complex case that's added in. Um, now, if you go to a cardio thoracic surgeon, of course, that's going to take a lot more skill and a lot more intensity of service. So that work RVU is going to be higher. So kind of in, in basic terms is our views are going to be different based on the specialties, give or take. Um, and a lot of physicians will go get extra skills, get injection skills, get procedural skills to help increase their work RVUs a lot of times. The next portion that comes in is the practice expenses itself. Um, how much does it cost to hire the staff? How much does it cost to supply everything in the office? How much, uh, you know, do you have an ultrasound machine, a fluoroscopy uh, machine, uh, uh, philosophy machine in your office? Do you have different things that might be beneficial? And then there's the indirect expenses and that can be staffing, that can be other things involved. So that comes into the practice expenses of RBUs. And then the malpractice premium, again, malpractice can be varied from practices to location to even specialties as we know. So that all equates into a total RBU and that's multiplied by a conversion factor that's agreed upon by people that aren't physicians, I don't think. And I think, I think that's one place I like to stop you because that conversion factor is where they get the rub, right? Yeah. Um, that, that conversion factor is always just kind of thrown in there. And that's where kind of CMS can change things. Uh, that's where Blue Cross Blue Shield can change things. And that's where the rug kind of gets pulled out from under us, right? Exactly right. Um, so this is a basic uh, overview. I mean, I, I don't have all the answers about this. And we've had many debates uh, between Anthony and myself and our colleagues about how RVUs work and what do they mean and what the conversion factor means, example, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, this is, this is pretty much any employed position is going to base you on an RVU basis. And then this kind of brings in the MGMA. I don't remember what that stands for, <laughs> if it even stands for anything. Um, but that's kind of our baseline of what everyone bases salaries off of. And they either say you need to be in the 50th percentile of this, and that's kind of a more costly place of living. They're going to give you a little bit more, you know, more rural area, they'll give you a little bit less. Um, but this MGMA data is like, we don't even know where to get it from. Like you have to pay a company to provide that data to you. So it's kind of another thing. It's like, who is really leading us to the, to our value? And yeah. how can we increase our value as physicians to get to our end goal of being happy in our lifestyle commitments and doing what we can do to help patients out? So that, that just floors me um, to, to hear that just because basic negotiation, I think you guys know your value, um, or at least you should know, right? Um, and but if you, I guess, partnering with Doc Nation, they've done this before. They they've already negotiated for physicians. They know your value. It's um, you said hook up with Doc Nation, Doctor Rufino. That that involves you know, maybe following them on social media. That's easy. Joining the nation on the website. And then Doc Nation will reach out to them in an email. Also okay for physicians to just reach out to Doc Nation on their email as well. There will be a customer relations contact there to set you up with a free consult. Correct? Yeah, basically, people ask me, what can Doc Nation do for you? And it, it's very much 
basically anything you need to run your professional livelihood, right? And and I'm not we are, Doc Nation is not reinventing the wheel here. There's already a group of people, high earning people in the country, and that's athletes that already have um already have this model. And and I think physicians deserve it. You know, I, I always think, you know, do lawyers need this? Do do who who actually needs this? And and to me it, it's physicians because of the time that we've spent, you know, learning the medicine and how much we don't know about this. And then if you really look at the numbers, if you really look at the numbers, you'll see how much money is going elsewhere. Um, and that that's some slides I want to get into here. And and if these slides should make you a little upset, I, I think that's part of what Doc Nation is, is, is physicians have to actually get upset. You know, our first webinar was doctors strike question mark. Would doctors ever strike? I, I don't think we would. We took a Hippocratic oath. But what would happen if they did? Right. It would be five minutes. I mean, it would be a, a five minute strike and, you know, we, everything would go go the way it should be. And, and the reason we don't is because we're altruistic people. That's why we're in medicine and not in finance on wall street right um you know the smartest people in your class probably went to med school and finance you could have went and done that it's it's a stressful job but you could have done that but you went into medicine because you wanted to help people you didn't want to deal with this stuff and and at some point here what's happened is the finance world has come into the medical world and taken every piece of the pie that they can and uh i want to share two slides or three slides here in a row actually hopefully i can do this so this is one where, you know, you look at the piece of the pie, piece of the pie in every major sport is about 50%. And this didn't happen until they got agents, until they got representation, until they got a player's union. And, and that's what I call Doc Nation in a whole is our player's union, right? It, it's a union. That, it, some people don't like the union word. It is a union. And uh, before athletes had a union in the 70s and in the 80s, if anyone knows any older people that played in, in professional sports, they, they aren't, you know, set for life. Um, then they got a players union and then the owners had to finally give the money to the players. And if you look at the number on the end, I mean, that should floor you that physicians get 8.6% of the whole pie of healthcare in America. And, you know, there is a healthcare cost issue, but it's not the physician driving it. I mean, it's just not true. Um, I think a lot of people making some of the laws and a lot of people making some of the policies try to make it think it's that way. It's not even close to true. And our goal for Doc Nation is to move that percentage 2%. If you move that percentage 2%, the, if you look at the bottom number there, 10 billion in the NBA, 5 billion in the NHL, you know, all these numbers of, of how much salaries are out there and how much actual cost is out there, the, the trillion, $1.8 trillion, it's actually up to $2 trillion now. This is probably old data um, in the healthcare costs. More of it needs to go to the player, right? So that's one number that should make everyone a little upset. Uh, the second number, is this one um this is just the change in price prices across the country with inflation versus the change in medicare coverage factor and uh it, i mean we aren't even we aren't even close to keeping up and then of course i i'm pretty sure everyone that's on this call has heard that we're all getting a a four percent to six percent depending on how you read the bill that just got signed pay cut starting January 1st, across the board, Medicare, boom. Um, and inflation is looking at around 8.5% for the year. So, you know, this is the kind of thing that you say, why? Why is this happening? Why, why is this profession not riding with inflation, at least with inflation? And then I think this last slide really drives home why. It is riding with inflation, just the physicians aren't. Okay, so the hospitals are getting more money uh the SNFs are getting more money um the ASCs are getting more money if you look at if you look at a lot of the procedures you do so so Dr. Verma I always say you know we talk about the pro fee and then we talk about the hospital fee for a procedure you do. the pro fee is what a 30th of what the hospital fee is Oh, I mean, so I, I did pull these numbers up. Um, this is strictly for interventional pain because that's our world and I had easier access to this, but you can kind of broadly generalize this to other um, specialties, right? So let me just give you an example of a professional fee of a procedure that I do um, in my office. And 
And it will just say like an, a basic uh, interlaminar epidural steroid injection. Um, if I were to do it in my office, there's about $230, $250, up to $300. A lot of factors go into that, what your kind of contracts are, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I would get if I do it in my office. And, you know, that's, you know, not a terrible number. Not It works really well. It used to be higher, but kind of living in the atmosphere we're in now. Now, if you take the same epidural to a surgery center, the professional fee gets cut down significantly, significantly. by 30%, 40%. So I get less money there. Yep. But the facility, on the other hand, I um, just want to give you a more accurate number. Um, we'll bill that, pretty much get the rest of that money. They're going to bill that other $300, $400 at that yeah. point. And here's the kicker. They, they don't have a cap on what they can put their service center fees for. So I've heard of people in, in Ohio getting series of three in epidural injections that cost them $2,100 yeah. up to $15,000. Like, you know, it's ludicrous. So I think 2,100 is probably a good average. And the, yeah. and the physician is getting about 90 to hundred of that. Yeah. Um, and that, in that aspect. And, and here's the kicker though, that, that, that really, this slide that's still up really drives home what's happening here is all of these big hospital names out there, all of these big ASC names that are becoming conglomerates have representation. They have lawyers, they have lobbyists. There's only one group here that doesn't, right? And it, it's the obvious group that has no say in what CMS does at all. And I think it should be the exact opposite. I think I know that's not a physician should have zero say in what CMS does. Um, and, and, that, and that's what's happening. It, 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 we're just trying to open people's eyes on what's going on. And we have some good questions here I want to get to. Does Doc Nation negotiate for locum tenens? Uh, doctors are mainly for permanent physicians. It, they, will they will negotiate for any, any contract. It can be negotiated. This is one thing that physicians need to realize. Any con and, and I didn't learn this until I talked to Greg, our head negotiator. I'm not a negotiator. Our head negotiator said, yeah. he's like, I will, they can, a, everything is negotiable. Everything from your non-compete to your paternity leave, to your maternity leave, everything is negotiable. Just physicians don't want to do it. What do we do? What do we do? I mean, Nikhil, you can, you can agree with me with this. We, we get our contract. We ask our lawyer friend, they read it. They tell us seven things on there that are probably bad. We ask for like two of them. We may get half of one of them and we sign the contract, right? That's what every physician out there does. I, I so, can guarantee it. I'll give you my, uh, I, I want to finish one comment about, so the hospital derived pain departments, that same epidural procedure that, you know, we're getting 90 bucks for at the, at that hospital, they get 700 bucks, like at minimum. And now the bigger yeah. hospital centers are getting up around thousand dollars for that same epidural. So I just want to give that. And then there's other procedures like neurostimulator things. They're getting 30, $40,000 for these yeah. kind of things. Sure. They have to pay for the device, but, but this, these are this just, exactly. This just proves the money's there. The money is there, right? And the money is going to these hospitals. I mean, look, these are privately traded companies you can look up. You know, the money is going to insurance companies, it's going to hospitals. You can look up what their margin is every quarter. I mean, I think United Healthcare made $40 billion last year during the pandemic. And that's, abs that's absolutely insanity. Um, so that question from Roxana, we could definitely do that. There's another question. Doc Nation is a union question mark. What is the leverage to fight against other parties? That's a great question. What is the leverage? This is the leverage, everyone, the physicians. And, yeah. and one of the things one of our partners says is you don't even need that many physicians. We don't need 100,000 people to march on Washington. We just need to get a cohort. And, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, orthopedics try this. Oh, OBGYN try this. You know, it needs to be across the board. We can't have this infighting across physicians. It needs to just be MDDO physicians joining a cause. Um, and, and kind of moving forward and, and getting together. And, that, and that's one way to join the nation. So there's a base level way of joining the nation, which is just joining, uh, and Neil, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's just joining joining up on the nation and, and being a member, right? And, and that just will get you the baseline, whatever everyone in the membership gets, you know, lower insurance costs, uh, whatever gets negotiated will be there. And then the second level is to get your personal uh, negotiations for your salary, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, uh, if you need help building an LLC, 
financial advice, all that stuff. That's a second level of what Doc Nation does. So there is the first level of just being in the union, being in the nation, being a part of it. There'll be newsletters, there'll be webinars, all these will be taped. You'll be able to get all that if you're in the nation. Um, so that that yeah. is that is a great question. And so player the first, like, that first level is key. That's the strength in numbers, right? Yeah. You guys have the nation. Um, and the, the communication that goes along with that and the advocacy that goes along with that as well. Uh, the membership, that's personal. Uh, you know, the uh, the consults and the negotiation, that is going to be personal to you and, and write those in. Um, many doctors already have and uh, those are on the way, underway. Yeah. I think that's important. Um, uh, there in New York, the nurses are about to strike based on very similar things, working conditions, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, but they have the numbers of 14,000 people. Like, I don't even think physicians need to get that high uh, to 14,000 because we have way more leverage. Like when it comes down to it, and we'll I know Anthony and I are going to talk about this a little bit, is we, we provide so many services for the hospital in the um, system that it would shock some of you to realize how much that they're billing based off of our jobs well, and how much well, we're getting paid. Run, run through it real quick. Yeah, I, absolutely. Me. So mm -hmm. as basic as a doctor's visit, right? You know, a lot goes into that. But once you start adding in smaller factors of, all right, I talked about weight loss. I talked about uh, quitting smoking. I've talked about other health style, lifestyle. All that gets bundled into that doctor's visit. So it's not just like a hundred dollar doctor visit. It ends up being like 200, $300. And now the doctor might only get 20 to $30. That's why they need to see such high volumes of patients and the CEOs and everything are making them get all these high volumes. So I just want to give that as a baseline example, but let's go into that. Say you need a procedure done, a surgery, life or death surgery. There's going to be pre-op labs. There's going to be an EKG. There's going to be imaging involved, all that stuff. There is a professional component to it, which the physician does that they bill for and a technical component to it as well. And that would mean the interpretation of everything. So they're billing on both those sides. Again, the physician's price doesn't go up or down, but um, next will be medication review. Uh, either the pharmacist at the place or the physician themselves will take a look at the medications and see, are there contraindications? Do they need to come off a of blood thinner? Uh, where are we keeping the levels of um, platelets and all that stuff? And it matters, you know, white blood cell counts, all that stuff. And there's the interpretation of that. Uh, then there's the upcoding of complexity of cases, right? So if a patient is morbidly obese and has other comorbidities, diabetes, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, the complexity of that case increases so now the hospitals are able to bill at a higher level. Um, so it's always funny. I remember in intern year when we would have the coders and billers come over to us when we're typing up our notes. Hey, can you add this? Add this to your note. Add this to your notes. Like, we're not making anything more off that, but the hospital. No, no. Exactly. Yeah. Um, post-op imaging. After procedure, every procedure gets post-op imaging. Again, billing for the imaging itself and the interpretation of the imaging. Um, now, a lot of times procedures, now we need physical therapy, occupational therapy, or get them into a, a short-term rehab stay or SNF. Those are money makers. That's why they're so popular. Um, then durable medical equipment. Does the patient need to go home with elevated toilet seat? Do they need to go home with a walker? Um, do they need cardiac monitoring? All these things matter. Oxygen. Um, nerve testing. You know That can be pre-op, uh, pre post-op for a lot of patients, especially in our world. Uh, the other radiological services involved. Um, the procedure itself, the complexity of the procedure itself, that's going to be absolutely huge. Um, and the stuff that's used can be kind of bundled into the payments. Um, now we're also talking about dietitians and what they bill for. You have occupational therapy. I kind of talked about that briefly. You have social work and you have case managers. All these things are things hospitals can bill for. Uh, and they base it all around a physician's guidance. And Again, we still see that same chunk of money from the hospital system, <laughs> but that, that rest goes to the hospital. So that's what they want you to, to feel comfortable yeah, in their I, system. I think the best way is in, in keeping the analogy with sports is, is this is that's royalties, right? Like if, if you, you know, Tom Brady's jersey gets sold, he gets paid a portion of that. Why they didn't used to. Why do they now? It's because it was negotiated by the players association, right? Mm -hmm. Every single pin with Tom Brady's face on it he gets a piece of that. So 
So that I, I, that was a great job, Nikhil. I mean, just just showing with that one patient that you saw and got paid that one RVU or that one pro fee, depending on how your system is set up, um, that's what you got. But your acumen and, 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 you know, your knowledge, this is where the know your value, you know, we, we really started talking about know your value. I don't think we really understand, uh, we as physicians in whole know our value because that number, that number, and, and people say I'm crazy when I say this, I think physicians should get paid three to five times what they get paid across the board, across the board. And, and, and I don't think they will be a detriment to our healthcare system. Uh, I think, I think, I think Dr. Jafita, a lot of the administration, a lot of, we, we'd get rid of a lot of administration, which I have another slide here to show you the admin growth. But um, I think we get a, uh, rid, of, rid of a lot of the uh, unnecessary administration in a lot of these hospitals. But, um, you Dr. know, Jafita, it, that doesn't, that doesn't sound crazy. What I, I mean, I'm just a business guy, I've been 16 years in medical device sales here. But what I heard was none of this happens without you guys. Yeah, it, that's the thing. There's no if there's no player, there's no game. You could have the best stadium in the world, you have the best fans in the world, you have the best logo in the world, but no players, there's no game. And uh, the, the physicians are the players; they just are. And I, I want to get to something in the chat here that people are talking yeah, about, which I think is great. Great conversation going on in there. Yeah, I think Keith, uh, thank you for thank you guys for putting everything in the chat too. I mean, this is this is the way Doc Nation has to run. You know, we have the Facebook group, we have the Instagram group. We have to be talking amongst ourselves in a closed form. Uh, where the just the physicians can chat. I, I one thing I do want to say, Keith's first question was, you can ask for all that you mentioned, but no one gets them. That's not true. We we have been negotiating physician contracts with agents, and you get it. They want you to think no one gets it. I agree. If everyone gets on board, then the thing things will change rapidly and much quicker. But that that's just that just Keith. I, I've we've seen it. We've seen it where. Piggyback you give your point. contract to our head negotiators or, or any of them, and they're just going to tell you left and right, hey, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I think. And you have full say still. You know, yeah. we're not going to steamroll you or anything like that. But, um, and to be honest, I think the physician should just stand back. I think they're much better at it <laughs> than we are, but it, it's just not true. I've seen, I've seen non-competes get actually totally washed out. I've seen someone in the middle of a huge blow up with their hospital that had a five-year non-compete for their whole county get totally taken away. And they actually got money back for missed time when they were put on leave. It, so I, I've seen it all. Um, you just have to be okay with, with having someone stand up for you. I think we need to unlearn that fact that there, there isn't, no one gets them. I think that's what was taught to us by our yeah. predecessors. You're like, oh, you know, if you're gonna waste your time. It is what it is. It's boilerplate, right? We hear that all the time. Yeah. It's, it's uh, you can't change that. It's it's uh, corporate level. The cost, the cost to replace. This is one thing I learned too. And, and guys, I'm no, I'm I'm right where you guys are. Um, I'm right where you guys are. I'm not trying to say I know all this, or, or Dr. Verma's not trying to say we know all this. We we no. didn't. We don't. We're we're giving it to professionals. Um, it, the cost of replacement for a physician is extremely large for a hospital system. And we're actually gonna have one of these webinars. We're gonna, I'm I'm in talks with an administrator and, and it'd be pretty tough for them to come on, I think, but I think they might come on um, to really talk about these things, to, to kind of look at the other side of things. The cost of replacement for a physician is extremely high, extremely high. The recruiting, everything, the loss of patients, they, they want you to think you're very replaceable, but it, that's not the truth. And then they do want to keep you on. And, and listen, they will even, we know what the cost, we, when I say we, the negotiate, the guys that do the negotiations know what the cost is. And that'll be the first negotiation. Just give me, my, my position's upset. He will stay on if you give me half of the cost of replacement. Give that to him, him or her yearly. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing that I, I want everyone to get out of their head that there isn't a chance for this to work. It, it really it really already does, and it, it's just such on a small level. Uh, it's one one you know offs here and there, but if we if we come together as a group, I, I think it can move the, the the tide really fast. So, Dr. Drafita, this is um, Doc, Doc Nation is relatively a new movement, right? But the medical negotiators that are part of Doc Nation have been doing this for years. They've been doing, they've been doing it for yeah a, a bunch of years just on 
one or two here and there. You know, they're, right. they're negotiators for everything. And um, now that we have them with Doc Nation, you know, they're really excited because these guys know how to move a group together. They, they can take five docs at once and it, it's much easier to negotiate together. Everyone knows that for a fact, right? So it's much, so they're very excited to kind of get behind us at Doc Nation and say, hey, let's go together. And, and this is where we got to blur the lines between, I don't care if it's pediatrics or family medicine or orthopedics or urology, you have to blur the lines across the board because that's what they want. I mean, we see it all the time. Gosh, on LinkedIn, when people start arguing and this stuff on LinkedIn, I'm like, you're just fueling so much fun. This is a public forum and like United Healthcare sees this stuff. You know, every, where, where the money is right now sees this stuff. And we need to just kind of come together and say, listen, we're not negotiating with you anymore. These guys are, they're our representation. You deal with them. And, and believe me, they're not going to like it. But when the owners, when the owners in the 80s, when it happened, they hated it. I mean, they, they blew up and, and the players are going to win because there's no game without the players. I don't even think I can keep up with all these questions. Yeah, you know, it was a lot of um, conversation. I think it's good conversation. Um, there's yeah. been a lot of talk of like, should we strike? How many people will take the strike? I mean, I don't even know if striking is the best action. I think if we get a collective voice, and I think a lot of people are saying we pay our society fees and they don't help us out. And we do, you know, we go to these conferences and they don't help us out. But it's like, I think that's what Doc Nation major goal is, is let's get everyone as a centralized voice. Then if we have to write a, a letter to our Congress people, it's not coming from individual societies. It's coming from. Oh, one of the it'll come from our lobbyists. It'll come from Doc Nation's lobbyists. And, and, and we're already in talks with local lobbyists in every state and also at, at DC level, and they're ready to roll. I mean, they're, they're ready to roll. Unfortunately, we couldn't do anything by this CMS cut, but they already have plans for the CMS cuts for the next two years. Um, and, and and that's not going to happen next year. We are going to have someone on the floor before a bill gets like that signed again, because we had zero. When I say we, it's physicians. We had zero representation on the floor before that bill got signed. And well, right, uh, there, right there, that's the call to action because that's where the membership is key. Correct. Yeah, that's that's where that we need where to, to, to to fund the lobbyists, to fund the lawyers, that kind of thing. You know, that that's where your membership money is going it's not paying for the negotiators it's not paying for the financial advisors any of that it, it's it's it gets the lobbyists out there it gets our voice out there and we need to come together we need to we need to stop fighting i mean we need to we we need to come together as a, as a group we can have our behind closed doors talk all you want about different specialties and turf wars and all this stuff but it's got to stop in, in a public forum well i just saw that the uh nurse practitioners and physician assistants lobbying and they're going to join forces and lobby together and they're, um, they're going to take a lot of our jobs to be honest yeah i was going to kind of leave that off to the side but you know we should be worried about that because if these physicians are leaving and these nps and pas are joining together i don't say that there's anything necessarily wrong with that but they're going to have a lot more leverage power than us and who's going to lose if we don't start having collective voice and stop our bickering between yeah. fields so I think there's a good question here. In order to make the feel them feel the cost of physician shortage, how many physicians should be on strike? I, I don't think we're going to need to strike. I just think we need to get the right people pushing in the right direction. I I, I just don't think it, there already is a huge physician shortage. You guys are. Everyone feels it, right? Everyone already feels um, feel. I mean, look at look at just residency spots last year. How many went unfilled? The most ever. You know. Um, and how many people are quitting? How many people are burning out? How many people, not even quitting, but are going to part-time? You know, there, there's still the same number of patients out there. Um, it, it, there already is a huge physician shortage. They're already starting to feel it. And they're going they're going to feel it even more because they're going to try, when this physician shortage comes up, I know people getting 20% pay cuts because of COVID, right? A doctor getting a 20% pay cut. And you, oh, what, 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 how would any profession take that? And why are they? Why do they have to take it? It's because they have a terrible non-compete. They have to move their whole family, you know, miles and miles away to a whole different city. So it, it's all just a scheme. I mean, I have some more charts here about non-competes. The general population, the general population with salaried employees, so not not hourly employees, there about thirty percent of them have a non-compete. Physicians, about ninety-two percent of physicians have a non-compete. Why? It's control. Right, it's 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 how you can control. If if you don't have a non compete, you can go to your low. There's many mo, most most areas have more than one big hospital network in there, and you can go and say, all right, give me fifty thousand more than these guys are paying me, and I'll I'll come over to you. And and no one wants it. 
so I, I think, you know, that the, the numbers are just staggering of, of how we're treated and how it's really pushed through. And, and the way they do it is is because, you know, Dr. Verma, we, we were never taught this in med school, right? Yeah. I, it's funny because I see a question here is I think Doc Nation should lobby to teach residents in training, business side of medicine. I mean, I think that is one of the goals of Doc Nation yeah. and Physician Thrive and mm-hmm. all that stuff. Um, I would recommend see, watching my YouTube channel because that's the stuff I talk about. And this opens up some minds and opens up some conversations and then it takes to the next level. And when we have an organized group, we can actually make some change that will be beneficial. Yeah, and I agree with Keith here. If you can have a, a large number of docs pressing each hospital, honestly, if you have five docs per hospital, no CEO wants to deal with five negotiations from docs at the same time. It's not gonna happen. Believe me, I talk to these guys, they, they, they know. You know what's funny is most CEOs now in the hospitals have zero power. It comes from the top, it comes from above them. Uh, the Trinity Networks, you know, it just, wherever you are. I mean, there's, there's a Cleveland Clinic, someone said, you know, that even the CEO has no power, but believe me, the CEO doesn't want to deal with five doctors at once trying to negotiate a contract. They can't lose a cardiologist, a urologist, a neurosurgeon, a family practice doctor, a pediatrician at the same time. They can't. The hospital, the hospital shut down. There are laws of what you have to have at your hospital, right, to maintain your status. They, they, they can't deal with that at once, and they'll have to. Spend. So it's not the one thing I really want to get across for the end of this is it's not hundreds of thousands of doctors that need to make a movement. It's it's five or ten in each hospital, or you know maybe five hundred in an area, um, in a state. Even. So so, Dr. G, what what is the what's the downside from every single physician on here getting their doc nation agent? Well, I think I think the downside that we think there is, and, and when I keep talking to people like you, I, I realize it's not there, is that we feel like we're going to become the bad guys. We feel bad about it, right? We we Because we're altruistic people, because we went into medicine for the right reason, we don't want to rock the boat, right? We know there, listen, most physicians know there's other healthcare problems in the country, right? Healthcare is not run 100% the right way in our country. Um but physicians kind of just hide on the side and say, hey, don't worry about us, we'll be okay, you know, and, and just kind of wave. And, you know, if you really look at it, we're, we're not okay. The debt we're going into, the, the number of years to pay it back, the, the burnout rate, we're not. And, and that's the downside. That's the artificial downside, I think, for most people. Listen, at our first webinar, I had people ask me if I wouldn't save their emails because they were afraid it would get back to their hospital system and they would get fired for joining the webinar. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, Neil, would, would you condemn a physician that wanted to negotiate their contract as a, as a non-physician? I would respect them more. Yeah. They show up, you know, it's, it, I mean, it, in my world, it's just too, it's just too common, right, to have these negotiation, you know, conversations and even have representation, headhunters, whatever. You, you guys are another level of professionals here. Um, every single one of these doctors here, I think, can make a big move by just having Doc Nation an agent in the middle of. And, and I keep I'm seeing some of these questions come up. It's like, what about for you know residents what, or fellows? You know, new contracts. It's always contract season. I mean, that's 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 what you know they say in sports world too. It's always contract season. Um, if you're feeling a certain way, if something, if there are changes around you in your organization, anything like that, you want that agent and you want them yesterday. It, that, that's where, where it seems like to me, I, I appreciate hearing you guys. I love your guys' passion and everyone here is, you people, guys are on to something amazing. People always ask me the cost and, and we don't really like to discuss the cost in the webinar. The only thing I, I will say, cause I'd rather you discuss that on your one-on-one meeting cause everyone, you know, cost is, is sometimes personal but that there won't be an end cost because you'll be making more so this is one thing i love about because i I don't want to be you know causing we doc nation doesn't want to be causing the physician a a bigger burden you know you already got all those things i talked about that you have to pay and all the stress You, you know the cost you'll be negotiated a higher rate and the cost will just be a little bit off the higher rate that you get um, so that, that's one thing where people ask me what the cost is. Like, well, the cost is you, you get paid more and then, you know, there's just a percentage of that, um, percentage of the gain, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So, 
So it's uh, it's kind of a no-brainer to sign up. It's actually it's a no-brainer to at least join the nation with the the button click on our website at docnation.com, um, and and take the meeting with one of our uh, physician liaisons. They'll they'll go through everything on a much more in-depth level, one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone's situation is different right now, right? Everyone's situation is different. Do not compete's different. Where you live is different. Where your RVUs are is different. There's so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> we're sponsored by the mob. You see this one? <laughs> we're sponsored by the mob. Are most unions sponsored by the mob? What, I don't know where that came from, but uh, no, I don't think we're going to be breaking any pinkies. <laughs> that's, not, that's not the angle we're going for. <laughs> um, but I, I think I think the union aspect is just coming together. I like to call it a players association other than a union, um, but it's the same thing. I'm not going to hide behind players association. It's just coming together as a common voice. And look at the conversation that's just happening in our Q&A, right? This is what needs to happen on the Facebook page, the private Facebook page. You know, this is what needs to happen behind closed doors. We're hoping to have in about five, uh, three months to six months time, we're going to have open forums, town halls with any physician that's in the nation. They have to have joined the nation uh, to come on board. I mean, I can already tell some of the people in these chats that would be very, very helpful other than just your membership fee and, and going in the right direction. Because we're going to need people all over the U.S. to to be spreading the good word and, and also to kind of tell us the pulse of the nation. You know, we're all in different areas, but we don't have the whole thing covered. Um, and that's what we're going to need. Um, really know it because it is a lot different in different areas different hospital systems different rbu values uh all that kind of stuff the one the one thing i think that is same across the board is just that the, the physicians don't get as much of the pie as they deserve i like it um i see this one that says have you been successful in the private practice setting negotiating against physician owners yes sure. Short answer is yes. That's actually that's actually a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a lot easier. Yeah. That that is that could happen probably in a week. Yeah. You know, it should uh, be uh, that, uh, go ahead. Worth no saying is it, um again on Becker's uh today actually, Becker's is that is a popular magazine that comes out uh quarterly and actually have weekly pages. But anyways, they were talking about how um, CEOs have made an increase of 1,460% pay from 1978. And, you know, physicians did have a nice little run there in the early 80s, but you saw that, uh, well, Anthony put up earlier that it was, it's going down. <laughs> so, yeah. well, that's what CEOs, happened. It was the early 80s, all the financial world found out how much money there was in medicine and, the people that are better at being, I don't want to say immoral or disloyal, just the people that are better at taking percentages slowly at a time into their side of the wheel did it. You know, um, you look That's at, the money I mean, look at, look at every new procedure that comes out, right? How much it costs for a new procedure to come out, where the money's going there. The VCs are giving the money to the companies. They're not, none of that money flows down to the doctor. There's, there's billions of dollars that get thrown around and, and the physician just kind of stay, stay the same. There's, there is a question about what's the membership fee. I, I mean, I'm okay with telling everyone. I know we're, they'd rather have it on the thing, but it's, it's less than your membership fee for the AMA. That's all I gotta say. It's, it's uh, it, we're looking at, so the, the numbers for the lobbyists and whatnot, we know we're gonna take in, but the membership fee is gonna be, I don't know if it was gonna, I'm just gonna say it. it's, it's, it's gonna be $500 a year. Is your member is just the membership fee for Doc Nation. Um, we don't think that's a huge burden, even for people that we're not, not negotiating for. The the goal is to have that actually end up being a net positive too, because you'll get it once we get critical mass, you'll get better, you know, insurance. We're we're there's a whole group of what's going on behind us. I can't really, I don't want to give away the other webinars as well. But we're hoping that that ends up being actually not a net negative. It'll actually end up being a net positive, more than just, um, more than just since the, more than sorry, more than just uh, the five hundred dollars. And you think you're just sitting, you know, you're a person though on the team, no matter what. If you're not getting negotiations, if you're happy in your spot, you know, some positions are happy where they are. I know they've been doing it for twenty years or even five years, and they're happy and they don't want to negotiate. That's fine, but I think it's important to have you know the cohort together since the ama does nothing for us we're more than happy to pay more than the ama fees 
Yeah, I yeah yeah the AMAs yeah don't get me started on the AMA the, the, the AMA should have been this you know when it first started that was the point of it but I don't know what it's become. I think that's a great point though, Anthony, and especially the people that haven't ventured out and realizing all these other things that you can get better for like malpractice. I mean, in group of numbers, we know they always provide better. So we're talking about malpractice insurance. We're talking contracts with the payers. We're talking medical equipment, supplies for the office. We're talking um, maybe there's a pool of staff that would much rather work for a doctor that has this kind of thing. So there's, there's millions of ways that this can expand to just benefit us. Uh, we just got to get started. And I think that's where the value in numbers comes. And we are, I mean, we've had, we've had, we have 200 and I looked this morning, 220 people have joined the nation, which I'm pretty impressed that, that people are, I mean, that to me, that that's very exciting. The fact that we had almost 900 people sign up for this webinar, um, you know, it, it's very exciting that an idea is coming to life. And the thing that's not exciting is the reason it's happening. The right. reason 900 people signed up for this webinar is because they saw the promotion and they said, yeah, I'm in not a great situation. Um, but hopefully we can turn that time. Now. And I think, and I know maybe some people on this webinar don't believe me, I think it'll happen very quickly. I, I think once, uh, you know, we start putting pressure on certain hospital systems, on a certain hospital in general, it'll flip very quickly. And, and you're not going to burden the healthcare system. You're not going to hurt the patients. There's all things I've heard that will not happen. Um, I was afraid of that at first. When I first had the idea, I was like, well, I don't want to screw any patients over. I don't want them to be paid more. Um, you know, we, we want this, the money to be coming out of the, the financial aspect, uh, the big hospital systems that, that are making more money than they need and the, and the insurance companies that are, they are doing well. Dr. G, there's a question that says, is membership fee included in the negotiation of service? Um, I don't know how they do that. I'm not, in listen, I'm a physician. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That'd be a good question when you have your one-on-one -on -one meeting. I think it's like, it, it might be, I think it's like the 500 gets you into the membership fee. And then if you decide to go for the, if you want to get the negotiating service, um, then it, it might be like, yeah, your first 500 off of whatever the percentage is. I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't quote me on this. That's a good question, though. It's a really good question. Let's see here. Can you can you get me paid in Bitcoin? I would love <laughs> I, I actually, <laughs> I know Dr. Allen. That is Dr. Allen. <laughs> I, I, I you know you can get whatever you want. I don't know if you want to get paid in Bitcoin right now, but um, <laughs> we can negotiate anything you want. That'll be we'll put that one on the website if we get that done. Um, I do want to share a story uh, about this concept too. Um, something I was thinking about last week. I had some procedures and some patients to see on Friday, and the storm had just come through the Midwest overnight from Thursday to Friday, and left and right, patients are calling, canceling procedures surgery center is like, do you still want to come? I said, listen, I told my patient I'm going to be there. I will be there. I had to make arrangements to find a place that I could stay closer to the surgery center. Um, not that I lived that far away, but just in case it took me a long time. As I was going to sleep that night, which was a terrible night of sleep, I'm checking my phone every 10 minutes. Are we in a snow, snow emergency? Are they going to close down the center? Because if they're going to close down the center, no one can go, but I still had patients in the office. What's going to happen then? So all these things, I'm driving to work. I see two semi trucks flipped over. I see sports cars in ditches and all this stuff. And this isn't a woe is me story. This is a story that's like, I'm just thinking, this, this is the stuff that we do for our patients. Did you lose them? I think we lost our audio there. Um, but doc, Dr. Verma, I I hear you. Um, you share that story too, and I and we see that. Um, yeah. I said we as uh, someone in my position, non physician who um, works in helping physicians on a on the device side, we see what you guys do. Um, and there's this like, if if you guys even take a day off, it it throws your whole community. Yeah. No, um, we feel bad calling in sick, right? I mean, think about how many people you have to throw off just calling it a day sick. I've, I've, I mean, COVID's changed things now, you know, we'll try not to go in sick. But before that, I remember, you know, you really, 
you just can't take a day off. And even even when you take a day off, I'm I I'm off today. I I feel the twenty calls. I mean, you're never off, right? Um, and that's just that's what we signed up for. That's the kind of thing that. That. But don't do that. Don't do that, Darji. I'll stop you. You signed up for that, but you should get paid for that. You, yeah. That's the part that has that's, to change. It that's does. The value. You're right. Yeah. You are correct there. Um, good question here. What's the time frame? And we're going to wrap up soon because my my rule is an hour. And, and I think this has been a great conversation. I always love, you know, one thing I love is seeing the attendees number not really drop off the whole time. That means that people are interested, people are engaged. Um, so what's the time frame that Doc Nation will reach out to the new members from trying to sign up? But our hopes, we are having a ton of signups, which is a good thing. Uh, it means that we're we're going in the right direction. Our hopes is within two weeks. If not, it'll be within four weeks. We we will reach out to you though. You will get an email um, trying to set up a, a, a date for a schedule, um, hopefully within two weeks. So uh, last thing I'm gonna say is, you know, just kind of a plea to everyone, at least click the join the nation button on docnation.com. Join the Facebook group. I think I think someone sent out the Facebook group and the LinkedIn group in the chat at the top. Um, maybe if we can resend those, the Facebook, the LinkedIn, and the contact us. You know, those. That's how this is going to happen. You know, we're not. This we're not as Doc Nation. We're not looking to be another burden on physicians financially. We're looking to be the exact opposite. So um, there's a lot out there we can do. Stay tuned for. There'll be a webinar every fourth Tuesday. We'll have one. We have three more set up. Um, please join. Please tell your friends to join. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Dr. Verma. I'll let, I'll let you two finish it off, though. No, yeah, I'm, I'll uh, piggyback that by saying if, with urgent negotiating needs, write in. We, you know, yeah. don't don't let we won't let that sit for you. Urgent negotiating needs there. Um, contracts that are hot and and fresh. We we will get to you. Um, so make sure that you write, go ahead and write in. Dr. Yeah, Berman, team, team at docnation.com is the email. If you if you email that with like, hey, I need to I need to get something done. I'm gonna I'm gonna pickle. We will try to get that done for you very quickly. We've done that for a few people in the last two weeks, actually. I appreciate you both for uh, having me on in Doc Nation, and um, yeah, hopefully that we'll have more conversations like this, and then next time it'll be what's the next step that we're doing and not just talking ideas. Um, and I appreciate it, everyone staying on as well. I will ask Doc Nation to send out my social media information in my YouTube channel. Um, I'm always open to questions as well. So I'll try to answer them the best I can as well. So. Certainly. Awesome, Thank guys. You, Dr. Thanks guys. Nowadays, happy new year other than the CMS cut, right? <laughs> <laughs> Way to send it off, Dr. G. <laughs> Good night, guys. Thank you, guys. Talk soon.